right, again, welcome everyone. The Community Action Partnership has a grant from the Office of Community Services to develop and manage the National Risk Mitigation and Quality Improvement CNCA Center. In addition to developing an online resource center in conjunction with NASCAS, we also create and promote tools and webinars on topics of interest to the CSCG network. Strategic Communications is the 10th webinar that we have produced, and all recordings and copies of the presentations are available on the TNGA website through the resource bank. To access the TNJ website, you can go to the Partnerships website and click on National Training Center or NASCAP's website and the CSCG Clearinghouse. If you have not already registered and have a username, then there will be a short registration process, well worth it to explore the resource bank, consult the bank, discussion forum, calendar, and to submit a request for TNTA. So to start off today's webinar, we're going to cover a little bit of technical information. If you are having any issues, please contact me using the private chat feature or emailing me at cyiu at communityactionpartnership.com. If you lose your internet connection, you may still call into the conference using the telephone number and code on your screen and in the confirmation email. There will be polls that will appear on the right-hand side panel. We appreciate your participation in these. If you lose track of any of your features, you can get back to them using your panels at the top. You may submit questions using the Q&A on the right panel. We have planned for about 45 minutes of content and the remaining time will be used for questions and feedback. Please send your questions to all panelists so we can make sure that all questions are addressed. This session is being recorded and will be posted in the resource bank of the website as well as the partnerships website. A PDF of the slides and the communications planning guide referred to today are already in the resource bank. We're going to start you off with a pretest that will be appearing on your right. We appreciate your participation in this. So if you could go ahead and take a look at that. We're going to uh, introduce our main speaker today. Lynn Brogan is currently serving as the Program and Communications Manager with the California Nevada Community Action Partnership, where she leads the program and promotion activities for the Community Action Association. An expert in the field of communication, Lynn brings a comprehensive background with extensive experience in communications and marketing, training, strategic planning, graphic design, web maintenance, and community relations to CalNEVA. She consults with and advises CAAs throughout California. And with that, Lynn, we're going to turn this over to you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, to, depending upon where you're located. Uh, I'd like to thank the National Community Action Partnership for inviting me to host this webinar on strategic communications. Communications has been a passion of mine since I was very young, and as my bio states, I've worked in a variety of industries developing all aspects of communications programs. I'm relatively new to community action, having joined the California-Nevada Community Action Partnership uh, about three years ago. It's interesting to note that I've had my branding challenges working with CalNeva. Why? Because if you Google CalNeva, it comes up as a casino in Nevada. <laughs> um, most recently, also, CalNeva is California's association, not Nevada's association, because they've established their own. So because of these challenges and because I saw a need, I have developed a communications a uh, plan for our association, which I will share with you a little bit later in this webinar. So feel free to ask questions as I proceed. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions as I go along because I know sometimes they come up uh, as I'm speaking, so I want to be sure to answer them. Many communication, uh, community action agencies are asking the following questions. Why are we not uniformly branded? Why are we not understood? Why do public or legislative representatives not know about us? Uh, what communication techniques should we use? Where do we start and how do we mobilize? I, I know I've heard these questions come up so many times in my um, outreach and in my um, uh, working with the community action agencies and even working as CalNEVA. And we may know the answer to many of these questions. Um, our community action history is very complex. Uh, we have a, quite an extensive history 
And um, our variety of services is complex as well. They're based on local needs. Uh, some of the agencies, you know, provide uh, uh, food for, uh, for people, whereas other agencies may provide job training. Uh, so there's, there's a whole variety of, of uh, needs or uh, services based on those local needs. And although we're funded with a relatively small amount of CSBG funding, oftentimes, we can leverage that funding to bring more positive impact to our communities, and that's the important piece to remember. I've heard that many legislative res representatives and sectors of the public do not know about community action or really truly understand the nature of what we do or how important we are to the community, because we're the backbone, we're, we're the spine of it, if you will. And we don't have a universal name format, for example, United Way. Everybody knows United Way, United Way of the Bay Area, United Way of, of certain states, et cetera, et cetera. There's Boys and Girls Clubs, there's Salvation Army, just to name a few. So how do we address these issues and how do we get started? As you can see, there are many, many different ways to market your organization. Uh, events, creating materials, presentations, uh, surveys, news conferences. Uh, you need to establish a budget, uh, languages, um, messaging, educational level, calls to action, um, measurement, uh, creating media kits, image. It's, it's all very complicated. We don't have the time to just willy-nilly plan an event or two. Um, oftentimes, we are in a reactive mode, and it's so important to think about becoming proactive and being proactive. Um, it's important to develop a campaign that garners the metrics of whether it targets the right audience or whether it works or not. So, so how do we, how do we um, address those issues. Through effective communication planning, I can't emphasize enough how planning is the key. It is proactive. Uh, we want to tell our story effectively, and in order to do so, to do just that using a process will give you that opportunity. Planning will coalesce our efforts in a focused, strategic way. We then will efficiently use our time and efforts, increasing our success as we compete with a soundbite-driven world, and that's what we are competing with. One of the points I want to emphasize is consistency is the key. Consistency of messaging, consistency of timing, consistency of brand. As I talked about earlier, branding is important. It's your identity, and community action um, it's, it's, the thought is to pull together to really make sure that we are talking about ourselves as community action. But that consistency is very key, and that will, will bring you success. I developed the Communications Planning Guide to assist our agencies in California as they struggle to build their communications programs or to enhance their communications programs. Some of our agencies have incredible talent, uh, media experts, video experts, marketing experts, outreach experts, et cetera. And some of our agencies do not have an expert, but someone assigned to do outreach or marketing for their agency. Also, I found that just because someone is an expert in one area, they may need an assistance, assistance in others. So I also developed the communications planning guide to address the issues of branding, as I said, logo, identity, and recognition. It's interesting to note that also in California, we've developing the, we developed the marketing roundtable, which is a series of discussions with communications representatives throughout the state. Uh, each, each agency has been invited to join the round table. And what we do is we meet via conference call on a monthly basis generally. And we've had one face-to-face -face meeting 
and we discuss the various questions that I've asked previously. We share dynamic ideas and samples of each other's work. I've actually posted the samples on the CalNEVA website at the same place that you'll be able to find the um, communications planning guide, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. We've also expressed our concern with the community action branding issue and discussed communications issues in general. And our next steps are to more formally create goals for the entire state, bring us together, bring our messaging together and our focus together, and then to develop action steps and develop measurable results. And hopefully we can do this statewide and then build it out even nationally is hopefully the goal. In the communications planning guide, for the purpose of the guide, um, I've segmented communication into three areas, marketing, media, and outreach, each with a specific focus. Now, it's important to understand that these areas overlap as communication planning is developed, implemented, and measured. Marketing is defined as the process of performing market research and promoting services to community partners and funders and or customers through advertising, branding, promotional pieces, et cetera. A marketing plan develops and implements marketing campaigns, designs and implements promotional strategies and products for specific markets, audiences, and monitors and evaluates the results. Media is slightly different. It's a strategy to communicate to your audiences through print, radio, television, events, and the social media as well, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Media is generated by identifying key audiences, defining the messages clearly and concisely, and determining the most appropriate media outlets for reaching your audiences. It's important to provide background materials that reporters need and expect, such as fact sheets, graphs, etc. Make it easy for them. Outreach, another entity. It's an effort by individuals in an organization to connect ideas and practices to the efforts of other organizations, groups, specific audiences, or to the general public. Outreach, uh, I've found, often takes on an educational component, the dissemination of concepts or information. But it's increasingly common for organizations to conceive of their outreach strategy as a two-way street in which outreach is framed as engagement rather than solely dissemination of information or education. So it's a whole multitude of things. Outreach strategies are linked to the organization's mission and define targets, goals, and milestones. And speaking of mission, um, take a look at your mission. It's important to have a mission that clearly defines what you do. Uh, recently, we took a look at uh, CalNEVA's mission and found that it was um, a little bit cumbersome and complicated. And the board of CalNEVA is considering a meeting to really take a look at the mission and rewrite it to really define who we are. And as a marketing professional, it helps to have a very clearly defined mission because you can use that in your marketing materials. Marketing, media, and outreach, developing your plan. Now, this is an example of a marketing plan, if you will, and it can seem complex because it interlinks media and outreach as you develop it, but it gives you a roadmap, and this increases your success as you promote your agency or association. On this slide, I have outlined the planning steps, and in the guide, each of the steps are detailed. And I'm going to show you the guide in a few minutes in detail. Um, in developing your plan, you really need to take a look at your mission and vision. Uh, develop your target audiences. Uh, for example, the public, uh, who your public is, legislators, other organizations, et cetera, et cetera. Who are you really trying to target with your messaging? You want to develop your key messages. And this is important because 
Um, for example, when you're dealing with the media, you want to make sure that when you're talking to a reporter that you have, say, three, two to three messages. They'll ask you questions across the board, but it's important to stick to those messages so that you can, you can really put out what you want to put out there. And you need to determine your resources and your budget. That, that, that oftentimes determines what you can do in terms of printing brochures, in terms of uh, developing your website, everything having to do with, with marketing, events, et cetera, all driven around budget. So you need to determine what you have as far as your budget. Then you need to develop your strategic framework. Establish your goals and objectives. Tactical plan, that's all your strategies. You want to have your supporting activities, your target audiences, your deliverables, your time frames. Who's going to do the activities, assignments? Uh, that should all be in the tactical plan. And your evaluation and tracking. Um, it's important to, do, to identify your outcomes. And make sure that you define your measurements. Um, oftentimes we can figure out whether uh, a marketing or communications campaign has worked through focus groups or surveys. Uh, it's very important to really do that follow-up because then that way you can figure out whether or not your plan has really worked. And then importantly, monitor your budget throughout the process. The communications planning guide is all-inclusive, and I'm showing you the table of contents here. Um, keep in mind that it's a reference guide that you can pull off the shelf as a tool to use with your planning and ultimately with your execu execution of your communi communications efforts. I'll continue to update the guide because new and effective tools are being introduced every day. For example, we now have scan codes. Those are those little square boxes where people can scan them with their telephones and get information. Um, I don't have a section on scan codes in there quite yet. Uh, iPads, that's another area that's uh, developing. A lot of people are buying iPads because they're, they're easy to use and they're, they're small to transport, and people are doing presentations with those. So I'll be adding a section on iPads and how to use your iPad. This is a nuts and bolts guide is what it is. And um, as, as time goes on, I'll be updating it periodically. And as you take a look at the guide, if you find that there's something in the guide that you'd like to see updated, feel free to send me an email um, with the information and I'll be happy to include it because this is a working guide that we can all use. So let's explore the guide itself. This is the cover page of the communications planning guide. Um, as we go through and take a look, um, as I've talked about, it, it defines communications in the three different areas, and I have that all documented. It also um, looks at the uh, Community Services Block Grant National Goals, and the guide was developed to kind of center around those goals, how we can meet those goals. Table of Contents, of course, which I went over earlier. Developing a marketing strategy, and this is the chapter on the specifics of developing a marketing strategy. Uh, we look at the pre-planning -pro pre process, uh, developing, doing your market research, and looking at your audience, and it goes through all of this, this stuff in quite a bit of detail and talks about, you know, doing surveys and looking at statistics, developing a plan, looking at your resources and budget. And then it goes through your general marketing techniques, you know, what kinds of things do you want to do? Um, whether it's community events, direct mail campaigns, printed materials, which is typically associated with marketing, um, your small group presentations, your media collaborations, um, all of those things are, are detailed in the guide. I have a sample, and I know you have to turn your head sideways, unfortunately, to take a look at this, 
but um, I do have a sample of the California Nevada Association communi Communications Plan. And this is the vision for the communications department within the association, if you will. Uh, this is all the planning that goes, goes into the communications. Uh, you look at the vision, um, you know, to build, promote, and strengthen awareness of community action and community action agencies among various target audiences to support the prevention and elimination of the causes of poverty through education and promotion of self-sufficiency. That's just a vision of what, you know, what I see I can do here at the association. Uh, there's a strategic framework that's been developed with goals. And there's goals one, two, three, and four. And I'm going to go back to goal one. Goal one centers around promotion. And uh, when you have time, take time to, you know, go through this and take a look at it. Uh, goal two centers around business and membership. Uh, you know, trying to build membership, maintaining membership. Goal three centers around education, training and technical assistance, and advocacy. Um, and that includes, you know, all of the uh, asset building, peer-to-peer, -peer, which is a, um, a program that we have for our agencies where an agency can request assistance from another peer agency that might have expertise in an area that they need. Um, that's been a really good program that we've had. Uh, fulfilling the promise, and I'll talk about that in a, a minute or so, et cetera, et cetera, pathways to excellence, et cetera. Goal four is to strengthen and support the efforts of Calneva internal staff. And I, I think it's very important for organizations to take a look at their internal staff because the internal staff is the voice of your organization. Not only can the internal staff give you feedback on, let's say, your outreach presentations, if you will, or uh, events that you may be doing, um, your brochures that you may be putting out there, um, it's really important to, to look at your internal folks and get their opinions and get their, um, you know, their feedback on what you're developing to make sure that it is consistent with what's, you know, what the message of the organization is overall. And then it's important for employees to have recognition programs and um, internal communications. That's, that's really key. Oftentimes, uh, we, we ignore the internal communications, and it's really important to make sure that that is addressed. And on the CalMEVA website where you'll be able to find this communications planning guide, there is a, a webinar or a web um, uh, a presentation that addresses internal communications. It's quite good. So, you look at your target audiences, internal audiences, external audiences, and then develop your key messages. And then this is a sample of the goal that I just talked about, your goal one. And then you need to do, uh, to take your supporting activities, your target audiences, your deliverables, and your time frames, and outline all of that so you can calendar it out. Uh, I think it's, it's really important to um, make sure that you Take a look at the whole year. What are you planning to do for the next year? What are your goals? And this will help you to, to outline all of that. Um, also in this area, which has not been put in here, but you can put people in here, staff. Who, who is going to take care of the activity and uh, handle all of that? So it goes through all of the goals. And uh, like I say, I encourage you to take a look-see at the the plan. Um, at the end of it, evaluation and outcomes. You want to take a look at your measurement criteria, um, you know, the, your stakeholder assessments, and uh, evaluate your partnerships. Are they improving? Uh, do you have new partners? Have new resources been identified? And I'm sorry, this is hard to read since it's sideways, but. Uh, but uh, you'll be able to see it when you look at the regular plan. And then just the next steps, that's kind of an offshoot of what do you want to do, you know, as next steps. Identify new stakeholders, identify spokes, spokespeople for, let's say, events, things like that. 
in the guide also, um, there are samples of different uh, campaigns that we've done. And if any of you are going to be attending the national conference in August, I'd love to invite you to attend a workshop that I'm hosting. And this is going to be presented along with a um, gentleman by the name of Jeff Von Canel, who's the president and the CEO of Sacramento News and Review. And uh, the workshop is called Spreading the National Cap Message Through Cost-Effective Localized Publications. And what we were going to talk about is a campaign that was developed recently uh, that has that would powerfully impact your target audiences over an extended period of time. And I think that when you're developing your, your marketing and your messaging and all of that, think about it over an extended period of time because that blends in with the consistency as well. Because if you're giving a consistent message over a period of time, and people hear it over and over, then they start to really remember it. And that's, that's important. And as I said, with today's, um, you know, flashing of sound bites and, you know, and, and uh, you know, YouTube and all these different things, it, it's really a lot to compete with. But in this um, strategy, what we did is we brought together three Northern California Rural Community Action Agencies and the State Community Action Association uh, with Sacramento News and Review and developed and implemented this outreach and education project that targets the low, local low-income community. And I say local and emphasize local because this, this is really important in this um, specific campaign. Newspaper inserts were created with the assistance of the local agency. Uh, Sacramento News and Review sat down with the people from their local agencies and really talked about what the needs were and what the messaging was that they wanted to get across. And uh, there was a great deal of input that was solicited and used to make sure that uh, the pieces that were developed, and you can see the pieces on the screen that were developed, um, sent the right message. The press run in the publication uh, was in all about 40,000 copies uh, that the Chico News and Review inserted into their, into their paper. And then there was an additional 18,000 or so copies that were printed. And approximately this cost about six cents each. It was very, very cost effective uh, per, per insert. And the best part of this was is that the, um, there was no setup charge or graphic artist charge, which can cost a tremendous amount of money. And um, so anyway, Jeff and I are going to be talking about this a little bit more at the um, national, um, in a national workshop. And uh, if you'd like to hear more about this, if you'd like more information on this, if you're not going to be attending, feel free to email me and I will get you some information and uh, can even hook you up with uh, Jeff on Kano. Fulfilling the promise, you know, I'm going to try something here on this to just see if there's any way I can... Uh, there we go. I fixed it. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> but anyway, some of these I'll have to revert back because uh, some of these are, are horizontal pages. What I've done is I've included examples in this guide because I thought the samples would really help people see how everything was put together. Fulfilling the Promise was a uh, program that uh, we developed a couple of years ago. You can see the website address. It's uh, a series of videotaped interviews with um, our executive director, Tim Reese, and um, people from throughout the community action arena, from staff at community action agencies to people who have actually utilized the services. And um, it's really interesting to see how community action has really helped people. And so this is something that was developed. And along with um, this program was uh, developed a logo. And the logo style guide has been included in this. You can see the logo, um, uh, you know, the little butterfly and everything. And it was during the aura period of time. And let me get the... Um,
Um, but anyway, the um, identity style guidelines, and sorry if uh, hopefully you're seeing this in the correct way, but anyway, this is a logo style guide which was developed and, uh, and will give you a sense of how to develop a, a logo and how to stylize it. Partnering with the media. This is another area that is so important and I have uh, a lot of information on how to uh, promote your agency in this cost-free way. Again, you're competing with a number of different agencies to, you know, work with the media and everything. And they're looking for, especially television, they're looking for stories that they can film and photograph. So they want interaction. They want inter interaction, interactive behavior going on uh, that's interesting. And uh, so anyway, it kind of gives you, you know, some, uh, some pointers on how to work with the media. Um, I've included a media advisory. Uh, I worked with our state uh, department of community services and development and also one of our senators here in California, Senator Liu, and the Foothill Unity Center, which is one of our community action agencies on a national EITC Awareness Day. And we did a uh, news conference at Foothill Unity Center. And um, I've included the media advisory, which uh, I thought was very well put together. Um, the media advisory is typically sent out at least a week in advance, uh, if not two weeks in advance, just to give the media a heads up that this event is, is coming up. Um, also, then, there's uh, the news release which you can uh, read later. That is something that is uh, typically sent out the day before, maybe two days before, and also the morning of the event. And I encourage uh, you to send it out several times because they get stacks and stacks of these things and then go through them. And the assignment editors, you know, will of course assign the stories. So that should help. We also, um, called the media that day as well to let them know. So we had a, a series of phone calls that went out that morning to remind them that the event was taking place. And we did get some media there. Uh, we set up an agenda which I thought might be helpful as you're planning an event. It, it kind of gives you a sense of who spoke when and how, what the messaging was. We, we really worked on this together, the, the different parties, because we wanted to impart the same message in a different way. And um, it really was a very collaborative effort and a successful effort. Um, media kits. I'll rotate this again. Uh, media kits are something that we developed for the uh, Aura campaign that I talked to you about uh, for um, the uh, fulfilling the promise. What we did is we uh, used a graphic artist to do this, but we had an actual kit where we actually included the CD of the videotapes in this kit. We were able to give them out to legislators and uh, all sorts of different, um, you know, entities, community entities. And it contained, you know, a CalMEVA fact sheet, local program information, uh, community um, agency board and staff, and our projects. Um, the Save CSB Grassroots Campaign, that is something that is ongoing. Uh, I know that that's something that is on our website. You can see our website. And uh, it's a little hard to read, but uh, if you go through and take a look uh, in our website, you'll be able to find it uh, under news and, uh, you know, there's an event calendar, et cetera. Overview of outreach planning is uh, the third chapter. It really goes into detail about outreach planning, anything from events to, uh, to giving presentations and things like that. So that goes through a lot of that. Um, let's see. Oh, also uh, a good example of an outreach plan is to go to the National Community Action Partnership website. There's an address there 
uh, that you can take a look at their plan. They also put out um, a, a plan for the, well, it's, it's the um, May is Community Action Awareness Month. They have an excellent plan that they, they put together, so I encourage you to take a look at that. I've included samples here again. Um, how to get the job done, planning ahead, the importance of an annual calendar. Um, I can't emphasize the importance of that. That way you know what you're going to be doing when, and you can weave in other campaigns as, as uh, they come along if, um, you know, if you'd like. But it gives you a real sense of what you're doing throughout the year. Uh, like I said, Calneva, I've, I'm establishing a Calneva library with samples and everything on our website. Setting up a speakers bureau, there's information on that. So this guide is really comprehensive. This gets into more of the, just the general information, written communication, uh, you know, the, the questions to ask as you're developing your material, checklists, uh, proofreading reminders, you know, make sure you look at your dates and times and uh, places. Uh, many, many times, you know, I've seen things that have gone out that have the wrong date, Wednesday, uh, July whatever, as opposed to Thursday on that same date, those kinds of things. Really take a look at that. Has another little bit on branding and standards contact information. Uh, websites and social media, I have a chapter in here on the websites and the social media, and uh, you know, just some, uh, some really helpful tips on that as well. Advertising, reaching your audience through creative advertising. Uh, I know that advertising can be uh, extremely cost prohibitive, but there are some thoughts on um, maybe how you can do some advertising uh, without spending a huge amount of money. And then, uh, like I say, take a look at uh, what um, Sacramento News and Review is, is offering because that's a cost-effective way. Um, movie theaters, radio, those kinds of things, bus advertising, all those kinds of things are talked about in here. Public speaking, that's another area where, uh, with, your, with your spokesperson, or if you're the spokesperson, to really ask questions as you're uh, preparing your, your speech, organizing your presentation, writing your opening, the body, et cetera, et cetera. Um is huge. If you, if you say um quite a bit, uh, try, to, try to tape yourself or try to videotape yourself even for a number of reasons to see if you are actually using that a lot or if you're tapping your pencil or something to that effect. Uh, it's really important to, to identify those kinds of things because they're distracting to the people that are uh, watching or, or listening to you. Uh, videotaping yourself is an excellent way to, to figure out what to wear, what your body language is, all of those things. I really encourage you if you have an opportunity to do that before you go out and give an outreach presentation or do a media event. Uh, let's see, organizing special events, a uh, whole chapter on that, uh, specific workshops, forums, those kinds of things. Uh, this, this will give you a sample timelines, agenda, sample agenda. They're just really short, but it's, you know, it just gives you a, a kind of a toolbox, a, a event toolbox, a, you know, what you need to take with you, all those kinds of planning things for community events. Uh, tracking forms, outreach volunteer evaluations, thank you letters. It's so important to write thank you letters and oftentimes we, we forget, but after a conference, for example, or if you've uh, done something, uh, an outreach event where you've included other people, make sure that you write a thank you, thank you note or give them a call, acknowledge them. It's really important. A conference timeline I've included in this as well. A meeting promotion and publicity checklist. So these are all samples. Community partnerships. Um, you know, community partnerships are so important. I know that that's uh, that's key in in uh, promoting community action. And uh, this gives you a kind of a, a rundown on how to do that and uh, how to do events with other community partners. 
Then I get into using PowerPoint effectively and working with PDF files. Uh, so this, this gives you a sense of PowerPoint. Now this was developed with the older version of PowerPoint, and again, I need to upgrade this because uh, there's a newer version of PowerPoint out there. Uh, one of the neatest PowerPoint um, presentations that I saw fairly recently was very, very simple. It had a black background and white type. And the type on the background was extremely large. There were maybe uh, one or two words, three or four words per slide. And uh, when he talked about you know, the uh, presentation, it all came from his um, audio. And it was interesting because you weren't focusing on reading the slide per se, you were more fo focused on what he said. And I thought that was interesting. So that's something to consider as you're building a PowerPoint um, a presentation. Tools of the trade and how to use them. Uh, just, you know, projectors and uh, uh, scanners, uh, cameras, uh, you know, CD. Now we have flash drives. Uh, that needs to be added in here. PA systems. Uh, one of the things I learned at the uh, media event is there's something called a molt box out there, and I don't have that explained in here, but make a note of this. A molt box is something that can be um, ordered, so it hooks up to your microphone, and the reporters who are filming the event can feed right into that molt box, and the audio is so much better than what they can capture ordinarily. So it's just another way to help the, help the media is to use that. And again, that's called a molt box. Setting up your tents and canopies, you know, different, different displays, that's in here. And then ending up with your safety depends on you. That's important to, to keep in mind, uh, use common sense, keep yourself safe out there. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, there's just some pointers on that and uh, you know, try to keep yourself uh, among people. But I know oftentimes we may go out at, at night to do a presentation or something like that. So it's important to keep that in the back of your mind. So this is, this is my contact information. And uh, it also shows the uh, CalNEVA website, cal-neva.org, and fulfilling the promise dash us.org, and I encourage you to take a look at those websites. And um, I think what we can do is we can show you now the, um, the national partnership has a way to be able to access the communications planning guide for you, and uh, also you can get it on the CalNEVA website. So, Cashin, would you like to... Um, Take people to that arena so that they can see where to find the um, the communications planning guide. We will, and uh, in the meantime, we do have um, a question that has come in, so you can uh, start talking about that while I uh, work on the technical side here. Okay, uh, let me see if I can pull that up. Uh oh. I'll have it all pulled up for you in a moment. Oh, good. Thank you. I don't have the uh, question that came in, so if you wanted to read that to me, I'd be happy to, to try and answer that. Will do. And just as a reminder, please, everyone, do send in your questions while we have uh, our expert on the line. Please try to use the Q&A box or the chat box and put it into all panelists. So what's come in is we have would this communication guide be useful for tribes and tribal organizations? I have a feeling the answer is yes. However, Lynn, if you have uh, some ideas how specifically tribes may be able to, to work with this. You know, I think this would be uh, an excellent tool for tribes and tribal organizations because it's an overall communications planning guide. Uh, you know, the I... I I would say that a lot of the techniques would cross over into the tribes and tribal organizations. Certainly, though, if there are um, certain nuances, that is an area that we could always add to the communications guide and would love to do that. So whoever did write that question, 
Uh, if you'd like to work with me, email me directly. I'll be happy to uh, develop that out and put more information in there to make it more applicable. But certainly I think that you could use a lot of the techniques because they're universal techniques that are, are listed. This is an overall toolbox for everyone to be able to use. Thanks, Lynn. All right, well, I have shared um, the screen with you to try to let people know where can I get this. I know it's a really big guide. There's a lot of information in there. Uh, you're probably going to want to um, have a printout, have this bookmarked somewhere where you can look for it again. There's a couple of different places where you can find this guide. You are at the CSBG Training and Technical Assistance Resource Center. Hopefully most of you are already members of this website. If not, there is a registration um, to do, a short one. I promise it is well worth it. And we'll go ahead and log in here. Into, go into the resource bank. As you can see, there are uh, several different ways that you can try to search for different items. Um, if there's other things that you are looking for, um, specifically for this, we are going to be looking for our communications guide. As you can see, there are many resources in here, and right on top, communications planning guide. You'll see a little bit of information about it, that Calneva was, in fact, the author of this. And if you look over here on the little blue link, you can download the PDF yourself. You can also get to this guide through the Calneva website. That is www.calneva.org. And there is a dash in the middle of that. From the home page, go over to Program, Capacity Building. And the communications planning guide is right on top there as well. Go ahead, download it, bookmark it, use this. Um, we think it's a wonderful guide, so we really hope that uh, you will keep this for your future reference. Now, I know I'm sure that we have a lot of communications people um, on the line today, which I'm sure are not quiet people, so please uh, keep the questions coming. I do have um, one that has come in since then, Lynn, that says that they are working on a style guide that will include commonly used terms, abbreviations, et cetera. Um, is there one that you guys know of that's developed already? I do not know of one that's been developed. If anybody else out there does know of one that's been developed, that would be, that would be really helpful. Um, this, this I think, would be really, really key to have out there. Um, you know, the other thing that, that we have, too, and I believe it's on our website, and I can send that information out after the fact, is an acronym <laughs> guide, because oftentimes, that's the other thing in terms of marketing and communications, try not to use acronyms. Uh, again, you know, Calneva is perceived uh, as the casino out there. We have nothing to do with the casino, of course. But, you know, Calneva is known in our community actions arena as the California-Nevada Community Action Partnership, and they get confused. But uh, other acronyms, but yes, if as far as the style guide, definitely, um, if you pull information on that, Laura, uh, Lauren, I should say, um, definitely I would be happy to include this in the communications guide or, um, gosh, I think it would be helpful to everybody out there. Thanks, Lynn. And, um, oh, I see the question about social media and re reluctant to, do you have any advice regarding social media? We have been reluctant to dive into having a Facebook page or Twitter account due to the high attention they seem, that they seem to require. And yes, they do require a lot of attention. Uh, this is something I know our uh, social media guru, one of them is out of San Bernardino County, uh, Marlene Merrill, who actually spoke at the national um, uh, uh, convention last year, she she does a lot with social media, and in fact, I think they have three different Facebook pages, 
And uh, so she's trying to juggle all of that. There again, you really do have to be consistent in uh, making sure that you keep your messaging out there. Social media is a conversation. Uh, it's, it's also a way to drive people back to your own website, but it's really a conversation about what's going on out there with community action, and it can be very effective uh, out there, but you really have to have somebody assigned to manage it and monitor it constantly and uh, really work, work on that. But it is something that is becoming more and more mainstream. I know uh, when we started uh, out, our state office could not even access uh, the, you know, the account at all. Now they're able to, and uh, oftentimes uh, state agencies will even have their own pages. So, so it is something that's becoming more and more uh, popular and relevant to use. I think it's an important arena to really uh, look into. And uh, there again, uh, Mary, if you'd like more information or would like to talk one-on-one, -on -one, I'll be happy to uh, assist you. Thanks, Lynn. Um, Any other that's, questions? That's all I see on my side. If people have uh, continuing questions or after you've spent a little bit more time with the guide, something comes up, we do encourage you to send those emails to us at the partnership. Send them to Lynn um, out at Calneva. Um, if someone starts finding some ideas on these style guides, post examples on the forum of the uh, CFCG Resource Center. That way uh, everybody can share in the knowledge and the gathering, hopefully, of that kind of information. So do uh, keep the questions coming. Um, since we don't see any others, I think we will probably try to wrap up a few minutes early. Um, there will be an evaluation that pops up at the end of the webinar. We really appreciate if you give us uh, some feedback on um, what you thought about the webinar, what would you like to see out of the training center, what, what's next, what do we need to do to follow up, anything like that. So please do participate in that as well. Um, Lynn, if you have any closing words. Well, I, I do want to thank the National Partnership for inviting me today. And um, one of the things that, that I'm uh, just kind of putting out there uh, for feelers is a national dialogue on uh, communications and branding and all of that. And I know that that's, uh, that's something that I'd like to explore more and more. So if, if people are really interested in having a national dialogue, um, let me know or let the national partnership know because I think that this is an area where if we pull together as a group and really have those messages consistent and we're able to really um, formulate our branding, we could really, really have a voice out there. And uh, I think that, boy, we're, we're so mighty and we're so uh, strong in what we do and we're all so dedicated. And uh, to be heard out there would be really rewarding. And I know we're heard, at the same time, I think that we could also expand that out. And the more people that are involved in that, the better. So, so that would be my parting words is to, if, if people are interested in having that national dialogue, I'd love to hear about it and, and we'll take it a step further. Sounds good. All right. Well, the post test uh, has been opened on to the right, so we'll give people a moment to try to answer that. Um, but officially speaking, the webinar is done. So post-tests and evaluations are all that's left. Thank you again, Lynn, for joining us. Um, we love this tool. It has a lot of really great samples, a lot of really good examples, practical uh, methods to be able to use. So we are happy to have had you uh, help share this with everyone. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And enjoy, everyone. Thank you.